Ortega. Thank you. Uh, mine is different because I'm going through a process. It's probably it's kind of going to be a little dry and lots of word heavy, but I need to be very clear as to what the process is um, because it's important. Um, I'm sup I guess this is the title. <laughs> Aha! Th this is me. Um, I guess my quick bio is that um, I grew up in Calexico, California, six blocks from the border. Went to Cal Poly Pomona, got my degree in uh, gender, ethnicity, and multicultural studies. And then went to UCSB, got my degree in Chicano studies, uh, and studied undocumented students in higher education. And that's my favorite quote. Um, so, how did this come about? Through conversations from the Race and Equity Committee with staff, faculty, and students, um, it became apparent that many times microaggressions are happening on campus that don't necessarily violate laws or policies, they're in this gray area of, of violating values, right? And so we want to be very clear as to what is a bias incident, right? Many times we think, oh, like, you just don't like me, that's bias. Hmm, no, right? You can read, don't worry, it'll come back. It'll come back many, 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 many times, <laughs> right? Because I want to be very clear as to what a bias is. So what happens, right? What happens when these things happen? Like, what if I don't feel safe to go to the chair of the department? What if all of the structures have broken down? And that's where this process comes into play, right? So what do you do? Well, you go to our wonderful website, right? So it's www.tacoma slash report bias, right? And this is where you go. This is a wonderful landing page that you, you find. And again, what is a bias incident is right on the front. Very, very important. Uh, and once you go to this, we have some questions. Can you go and fill out a form anonymously? Yes. What is the problem with that? Well, the problem or the caveat is we have no way to contact you, right? You fill out something anonymously, we don't know how to get back in touch with you. Second question, is my report secure? Yes, it lives on the same server as admission data. So whatever safeguards for hacking that the admissions has, this has as well, right? We are mandated reporters, however, right? So not everything can remain anonymous if you so choose to. What happens if an incident involving someone who sits on the committee? Well, we recuse ourselves, right? That's kind of how it goes and no one can delete a report. Again, all of it's stuck on the same server as admissions data. Other question people have. Well, what happens? We have a first review. These are the four people, myself included, and all we're looking for is does it violate a law? Is it bias, right? Uh, and the next thing will actually tell me what other things that we do. Is it Title IX, right? Is there a structure already in place? Right? Does it go to UCERO? Does it go to the Title IX office? That's all the first reviewers are looking for. If it's not, and it's an incident of bias, it immediately goes to our review committee. And that review committee thinks about this some more. Right? What is a bias incident? Right? Again, it's going to come up many, many, many times. Right? It's an incident against a specific identity you hold. Right? That review committee is made up of these people. Uh, again. For small offices, it can change like, who's the re on the review committee because you know, there's a couple of people in these offices. Um, these people, however, will then get together and contact the individual who submitted it, if there's an email, right? Bring in experts as needed, and then depending on the response, it really differs, right? Is there mediation involved? Is there a possible policy change that needs to be suggested? Is there trainings that someone needs to take? That's really up to the committee. Right? What we want to recommend and kind of make sure that people are aware of is this should not always be the first step, right? There's other structures involved and we always want people to have these conversations with each other first, right? We don't want this to be immediate first step. In addition, this committee will make sure that we will report back to campus, right? Uh, how many of these incidents happened there? How many incidents happened in the library? Because we want to make sure that we're taking and tracking trends, right? Do we need to do more work in the library? Do we need to do more work on social media stuff? Right? So this is a, a report that will go back to campus to make sure that we are being accountable for the things that are happening. Again, many times, right? many, many, many times. Right? Lastly, this is not a punitive type of thing. Right? We're not here to fire folks. Right? We want to make sure that people are growing through training, through mediation, and there's still due process. Right? Like if there's a, if someone reports a law being broken, we're not immediately going to say, you're fired. There is a due process still in, in place. Uh, in addition, some questions that we have for campus, right, as a bias incident reporting process is, is there capacity for these trainings? Right? And I think we all know the answer, not at the moment. Right? 
what are our values? Right? How do we support people who have made missteps? These are other things that come into part. Once you have a place where people can say like, oh, this person made a mistake or this person made a mistake, all of a sudden it seems like every one of their mothers is making a mistake. How do we support these people, right? In terms of your own units. What things are you doing in your own units to make sure that these trainings are available to people who might make mistakes? Like, how do we really make this a loving and growth place? And that's kind of on a campus-wide question. To conclude, there's lots of gray areas, so much so that it's even covered by the clock. Uh, <laughs> Bias is important to examine, and we need to learn this. We need this tool, right? This tool is important uh, simply because there was nowhere else to go, right? Before this tool, students, faculty, and staff, who is anyone who can use this, right? It's not just limited to students. Students, faculty, and staff can use the reporting process. Um, did not have a place to report these incidences. And now we hope that there is. We now hope we can do more as a campus. So thank you. Questions? Yes. So I know there's been a few uh, reports already. Yes. What did you learn from these initial uh, the bias incidents that you uh, that been reported uh, in terms of <coughs> how the system's working, what people right. what people are understanding? So I mean, there's there's lots of things we learned just the mechanics of the program and like how oh, we need to add this to the website and add this kind of stuff. And so far, uh, there's been five reports. Um, only one was an incident of bias, okay. as written. Right? I think this is also important to like, relay to folks. Like the other, most of them that dealt with the classroom were just what written as classroom mismanagement. Right? And so we do facilitate that onto the department and be like, all right, we got this incident. Like, this is what happened kind of thing. Um, but as written is not incident of bias. Right? And so we want you to be like, very clear. It's like, um, is that faculty member yelling at you because it's classroom mismanagement or because you're a woman, right? Or because you're a person of color, right? So we, we want you to help tease that out with folks. Like, what is it? And that's gray and hard. But I think for, you know, the one that wasn't incident of bias was like, I'm a Latino and I can tell that that other person's a white woman and they're being treated differently in the same situation. And so that's, I have that comparison, right? And so that's kind of important too. I think that's what we've learned so far. Not all of them, right? So of the five, two were anonymous. Yeah. Yes. So um, the person who submits an incident doesn't determine if it's a bias incident. It's the group that meets that you the uh, <coughs> names you listed that determine whether it's a bias incident. Right. So we, but this is the criteria we use, right? So this is why we want to make it very clear that these are incidents of bias, right? You've some identity. So, so the report that you give will only talk about those things that have de de been determined to be bias incidents, and it won't give all, it won't list all the things that have been submitted. Right, we, we had one that was basically a comment, like, oh, it was literally, um, this reporting process is racist. That was what, someone submitted that report. And so no, we wouldn't count that as like a report. Like that's not, that would not go in the campus report, or the, the numbers, yes. So there's a question over yeah. here. Probably one more. Yeah. Sorry, just a follow up. Would you follow up with that student then? Who that was anonymous. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so but if it was, I mean, would you follow up with that? If it was, we would follow up. I think is that's it? that's what we want to model, right? We want to model that the first, if possible, right? The first step is always to have these conversations. Like, uh, oh, this professor said something disparaging. Do you feel safe going to that professor, right? For one, if you do, we encourage you to go to that professor and be like, hey, like you. Why would you say this about undocumented people or about Latinos or about women? If that goes poorly, which it might, then come to us. Or if you don't feel safe. Again, you might, you're, if you're a student, there's a fear of retaliation. That's real in many cases. So we understand that as well. Right? But we want, we want people to be empowered. Right? And we hope that as a campus, um, we have trainings and things that will empower folks to have these safe spaces or safer spaces, as it were. Yes. Okay, so I Yes. If you have more questions, please write down Ricardo's email address and let's thank you for sharing thank you. your work with us.